Ian Avery. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker. The Riley and Wilson versus the Secretary of State for the DWP court case on the 12th of February 2013. Uh, the applicants challenged the ESA regs on a number of grounds. I think there's four grounds, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. The first one was that the scheme named in the 2011 regulations were beyond the powers of Section 17A of the Job Seekers Act 1995. In other words, what that means is the regulations did not comply at all with the requirements of the Act. The second point was that the regulations couldn't be enforced in the absence of a published policy uh, in relation to them. The third point was that notices to individuals mandated to take part in schemes were inadequate. And the fourth part, Mr Deputy Speaker, was, uh, I think, set aside, and that was a suggestion that the regulations conflict with Article 4, Section 2 of the European Convention on Human Rights which provides uh, subjects to exceptions that no one should be required to perform forced or compulsory labour. As a Deputy Speaker, there are many, many organisations totally oppose the, uh, the, the, the bill which we have on the floor of the House today. Uh, and, and there's a whole varied, a wide and varied range of reasons on that. It's unfair to claimants to retroactively legalise penalties that the court has judged unlawful. In contrary to government claims, it is not obvious that the DWP would have to repay sanctioned benefits to all claimants, so it is not obvious that the £130 million potential loss stated is actually inaccurate. The government already has an anti-test case law rules which prevented having to repay anything for sanctions served prior to the 6th of August 2012. More information on that would be extremely helpful when the, the, the Minister decides to, 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 to sum up. It is of, of constitutional concern if the DWP undermines the judiciary and rule of law by using retroactive legislation to avoid accountability for its own errors and negate any further appeal judgment by the Supreme Court that upholds the Court of Appeal judgment. And comments from the legal representatives who were in court representing the um, Riley and Wilson said categorically that they believed that this emergency bill is a repugnant attempt by the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions to avoid his legal obligation to repair the thousands of job seekers who have been unlawfully and unfairly stripped of their subsistence benefits. They went on to say that the, the use of retrospective legislation, which is being fast tracked through Parliament, smacks of desperation. I believe that's being very polite in the extreme, Mr. Deputy Speaker. It undermines the rule of law, the said, and means that the Secretary of State for the Department of Work and Pension is once again seeking to avoid proper parliamentary scrutiny of his actions. The further added that it was in time for his department to admit that administration, uh, maladministration and injustice comes at a cost. Other civil liberty groups and campaigners and human rights campaigners have, uh, have explained to the press today, it's just been released on the BBC, that they think that this type of retrospective uh, legislation uh, is, typical, is a typical component, component of oppressive regimes. They couldn't have been any stronger than that. It's further been described as almost unbelievably disgusting by some uh, organisations. They went on to say that the DWP broke the law. Now they want to retroactively change the law so that they didn't break the law in order to keep the £130 million out of the pockets of some of the poorest people in this country. The High Court found workfare unlawful precisely because it had no way of knowing the rules that apply. It shows an incredible level of arrogance, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, and a disregard for the poorest to now attempt to backdate laws to challenge this ruling. It is correctly argued that the bill 
would set a dangerous legal precedent if passed. And send the message that when citizens defeat the government in court, it can overturn the court ruling retrospectively with primary legislation, effectively making the government above the law, effectively making the DWP above the law. Who's in charge, Mr Deputy Speaker? If this bill is enacted uh, this afternoon, it's not clear what would happen in the case of those who have successfully appealed decisions to impose sanctions. It appears that there have already been successful appeals against sanctioned decisions at first-tier tribunals following the Court of Appeal judgment. The government's argument is that the bill will protect taxpayers by saving them from a bill of £130 million. Can I dare to suggest that this is denying those claimants the legal entitlement? I also believe that taxpayers will be better served if the back-to-work schemes are properly scrutinised to ensure their efficiency and the taxpayers receiving value for money. This is a separate argument and it's been well said from both sides of the House this, 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 this afternoon. But as we can see from the poor performance of the work programme so far, with only 3.5% of people refer to the programme finding a long-term job. It's more likely to get a job without the scheme than it is with the scheme being in place. And a question, Mr Deputy Speaker, is there a liability of £130 million that would have to be repaired? The government argues that the legislation is necessary in order to protect the public purse from having to repair £130 million of sanctions which have been imposed. As I mentioned before, there are already significant anti-test case provisions within the social security system that mean it's highly unlikely that the government would be required to pay all of the sanctions. That's section 27 of the Social Security Act 1998. And this allows the DWP not to change decisions which were only shown to be wrong by a decision of a court. The effect of Section 27 is probably that the DWP could resist repayment in all cases where the sanction was imposed and served before the High Court decision on the 6th of August 2012. And also decisions after this date where no appeal is sought. In researching for this uh, contribution this afternoon, Mr Deputy Speaker, I had a look at the explanatory notes and the impact assessment which has been published alongside the bill. And the uh, number of issues uh, really stuck out. Number, uh, section 9, the bill has been introduced to avoid the need to pay claimants. Pay the claimants who have been sanctioned for failure to comply with requirements under the ASA regulations and be able to impose sanctions where decisions have been put on hold since the decision of the High Court of Appeal. If this were to happen, the, cost payer, the, the, the taxpayer is estimated to be um, £130 million. This bill is being introduced to save the taxpayer 100, up to £130 million and de deprives people who are the most vulnerable, people who have been on workfare, people who are looking to better themselves in employment. It simply says that this is being uh, introduced to deny them £130 million worth of compensation. That's 300,000 people involved here, 300,000 people which would like uh, decent employment with decent wages, terms and conditions. And this government is introducing emergency legislation to prevent them getting only what the Court of Appeal says that they deserve. It's an absolute outrage. The effect of the bill will be that any decision to sanction a claimant for failures to complain with the ASA regulations cannot be challenged on the grounds that the ASA regulations were invalid on the notices given under them inadequate, notwithstanding the Court of Appeals judgment. This is to ensure that the government isn't faced with a situation whereby job seekers previously sanctioned or to be sanctioned for non-compliance under the ASA regulations can receive an unfair advantage over compliant claimants. Again, an outrageous statement to me. 
The bill also addresses the risks that previous notifications to claimants made under the MWA, that's the Mandatory Work Activity Regulations, which contain some notification provisions as ASA regulations, may also be open to challenge on the basis of that. The explanatory notes, Mr Deputy Speaker, says that the impact upon individuals is that job seeker allows claimants who have not complied with requirements under ASA regulations will not be repaid sanctioned benefits as I might expect following the judgment or they may have a sanction imposed. The bill effectively restores the status quo to a situation before the High Court and Court of Appeal judgments. Once the bill is enacted, claimants who might have appealed against previous sanctioned decisions on the grounds upheld by the judicial review will be unable to do so, and sanctions imposed under the uh, legislation can continue, and sanctions decisions currently stated can be made in accordance with the original intent of the legislation. This is to ensure that the government is not faced with a situation whereby job seekers who fail to comply uh, with their requirements and were sanctioned under the, the quashed ASA regulations can receive an advantage over claimants who have complied with their requirements. It is necessary to safeguard the economic interests of this state. I wonder if it is in the best interests of the country, if it's in the best interests uh, in terms of the economy to deny ordinary, mainly poor people, uh, what they've been uh, granted in t from a court of appeal hearing. A retrospective transfer. Yes. But the people taking part in these schemes knew at the start, if they didn't take part, they'd be sanctioned. They knew there was a penalty for not taking part in these schemes. Did he think it's right they shouldn't be penalised? They did. Thank you very much. I'm absolutely certain that the 300,000 people who the court says should have claim uh, because of the illegal actions of the minister's department should receive that claim. No doubt about it, in this legislation being put forward by the DWP, by the government to deprive hard-working, many hard-working people, many people who want to be hard-working, to try and deprive them of any finance whatsoever, in the best interests of the, the economy is an absolute disgrace. Because these are the people who would actually spend the money in the economy. These people who get the, the, the £100, the £50, the £72 will be spend it because that's the only money they've got. You sh the, the minister shouldn't be looking to deprive these sort of people from any finances whatsoever. Bench, when they argued in favour of sanctions earlier on. I haven't disagreed with, with anyone up till now other than the, 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 opposi the, the, the government in terms of the way in which they wish to deny ordinary hard-working people, people who wish to go on in life, uh, the, the, the fact that they'll not be able to get what the Court of Appeal actually says. Of course I'll give me. very grateful to the Honourable Member giving way, and I'm sincerely impressed with the passion with which he's making his case. But have I misunderstood the situation? If I were in his shoes, I would be determined to vote against this bill today. Have I misunderstood the fact that his own front bench are not proposing to vote against the bill today? And if not, why not? Thank you very much for that. I, I, I'm not sure if you have misunderstood, but perhaps when the vote takes place this afternoon, you'll be much better informed. <laughs> Mr. Mr Deputy Speaker. I've got to say that the, 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 this, the, this bill turns, absolutely turns my stomach to suggest, and this was in the impact assessment uh, study, a retrospective transfer of public money to this group of claimants would represent poor value to the taxpayer. What a disgrace! to say such a thing in government documents with regards to people who have mentioned 10, 15, 20 times before. That will not give them any self-esteem. What about these people who are doing that very, 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 very bad? Of course I'll give away. Give away. Jobless households trebled under Labour, with these increasingly becoming the norm for the next generation. Surely we owe it to those children to assist their parents to get their first foot in the door of a potential job. Now, specifically, I recently spoke to one parent who said her children were full of pride. Now she held an opportunity. Why deny that to others? Fourth, fourth. 
as, as, a, as a member of parliament, obviously, we, we, we all discuss with uh, members of the constituency, quite often people away from the constituency, uh, the merits and, uh, and otherwise uh, of different policies. I often meet people with uh, certainly a very different and very, very view to the people who, who you've been meeting. That's not to say that, you know, that that hasn't been said. The people who I meet want just decent jobs. They just want the opportunity to get up in the morning and go to work for a, a decent wage. They would accept the minimum wage, even though at this point in time that's not high enough. Where I live, uh, that, that there's people, I think there was 20, 25 people after each single job in the job centre. So that means that 24 people are not uh, getting employment for every single opportunity. People want to work. They want to work for, for, you know, for, the, for the best intentions and the right reasons. They want the self-esteem. They want the finances. People want to work where I live, and I'm sure that, that, that extends uh, across the country. But I get back to the fact that you know, seeing that a group of claimants uh, paying this money, which the court have said should be paid, or the, 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 the result of the, the ruling means that the £130 million pound could be paid, uh, it, it is not representing good value to the taxpayer. Quite frankly, it's, it's, it's an absolute disgrace. It's not the type of language, Mr Deputy Speaker, we would expe expect from any government. It's not right to talk about people as if they're these group of claimants. These are ordinary people with feelings, ordinary people, many who, who want to go on in life. Many of the individuals, uh, yes, of course. If they want to get on, get on in life, why have they turned down the opportunity to get training and support which will help them get a job? There's, there's a whole number, a whole range of reasons why people have received sanctions. And just because people, uh, in my view, uh, just because people have received sanctions, it doesn't mean to say that a government should be in a position to overrule the, the, the court, of, uh, 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 court of Appeal uh, ruling to, 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 to put legislation retrospectively against those individuals. Uh, I'm sure the Minister isn't suggesting because somebody, does, for whatever reason, received a sanction that they, under no circumstances, even if the, 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 uh, the courts agree in a ruling that they should be able to, to claim some sort of subsistence, well, well, that that shouldn't be the case. I'm sure the Minister isn't saying that. I know friends come across cases like this, but I've come across a number of people who have gone for a number of jobs, but they've also been told when they go back to claim job seekers allowance they're not trying hard enough. What an attitude in the 21st century. Mm. Exactly. I fully ex I understand, the, and, and as I said before to the Honourable Gentleman, we are, you know, every MP has received lots of representations with regard to all of these uh, wide and various schemes in, t in terms of, of workfare. But the, the impact assessment says, it adds, Mr Deputy Speaker, if the Department cannot make these retrospective changes, then further reductions in benefits might be required in order to find the money to repay the sanctions. Well, that is absolute blackmail of the highest order. I make no apologies for the, the strength of my feeling in result uh, of this. I believe that if, if people are due finances, particularly if it's, if it's a court ruling, that it, for a government to say that, well, if we pay these people, then indeed we might have to cut other people as a result because that's where we'll have to find the money. It's emotional blackmail, it's, it's totally and utterly bang out of order, trying to put people uh, who are looking for work, for work uh, people on benefits, against people who are looking for work and people on benefits. It's absolutely unacceptable. But, Mr Speaker, just to, to, to conclude, there's a, three or four questions um, perhaps the, the, the minister w would answer uh, when he winds up. I mean, is it, is it right that claimants face financial penalties for failing to participate in schemes where the possibility of those penalties had not been properly explained to them? Is it right that the government can flout the will of Parliament, which had clearly expressed its wish to have some oversight of the schemes used? especially given that the schemes designed and imposed upon claimants without an opportunity for parliamentary scrutiny do not appear to be working. Is it true that the DWP continued to issue letters to claimants 
which didn't explain things properly even after the High Court had stated that these letters were inadequate. And finally, well, uh, uh, the, 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 the Minister says from a sedentary position that this is not clear. These are the questions which, which I hope he will clarify. Uh, yes. Right now. Uh, the, when the High Court uh, issued its uh, judgment, uh, we changed the letters to comply with the High Court's rules. Th thank you very much for that. I think that is a debatable point. But, however, in the, the final question, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, is what's the DWP's understanding on whether Section 27 of the Social Security Act 1998 would protect it from having to repay some of these sanctions? There's 300,000 people being denied their legal rights if this, uh, this legislation is passed. It's just another ideological attack on the unemployed, the less well off, uh, despite the a High Court judgment. I must just ask the Minister, why not just accept the court of law? Give these people what they're entitled to. It's your mess. Why should they suffer? 